Welcome to Portals of Perception. This is an important conversation about friendship. What is friendship? What is the place of friendship in human affairs and in the endeavors we embark on? And we bring here today a circle of Portals friends who inquired into the quality, the essence, the presence of friendship and its multifaceted expressions and natures in life on a year-long journey. Come, join the discovery. Discover what friendship is for you in your life and be rejuvenated by the wealth of presence that accompany us here. Welcome to Portals of Perception. The human development journey can be at times a lonely affair. So today we are in conversation about friendship. What is friendship? What is its place in the human endeavor? And how do we cultivate friendship along the personal and collective journey that we embark on? We are gathered here with a circle of Portals friends who explored these questions and more on a year-long virtual quest. So Daniel, let us uh, begin with you. Uh, you are a TV documentary writer, author of two factual books and soon to be published first novel, provisionally called Heaven's Fire. And before grounding us in the origin story of this journey to appreciate friendship, how would you describe your core areas of interest and passion that brought you in the first place to initiate this quest to decode the nature of friendship? Well, hello and hello to everyone. I think that from my earliest years, two things have moved me greatly. One is language, which is probably why I ended up as a writer. And the other is people. And the stories and the story that, they, that their lives actually present to the world. It's led me to a great... Uh, love of history, but much more than his story, I've been moved by her story, the inside story of what moves people. And within that, it's the intimate moments when people come together and can share the depths of themselves with each other. Sometimes it's uh, mind to mind, Sometimes I think it's soul to soul. And in that kind of ecology, which we know to be friendship, all kinds of things happen and the release of brilliance of individuality. And that's something I love to see in the world. So by way of grounding us in the origin story of this uh, mutual quest, what would you offer? <clears throat> well, the trigger for the, for the gathering was a conversation with yourself in which uh, you invited people to speak about friendship. And I was so moved by what came from the inner lives of people that even though it was just a short conversation, I felt that this was a an opportunity, uh, um, more than an opportunity, a calling that shouldn't be missed. And so I reached out to some friends and asked if anyone else would like to, to gather to, to really to be a living laboratory for what it is that we call friendship. Yeah. Because it's something which 
we we use the name, we use the term very easily. These are my friends. But I found that I'd never really looked at what is friendship? How do I cultivate friendship with others? Do I really give people the space to be themselves? And so we've uh, been in this journey together, as you say, for a year, and it's been magic. Mm. Yes, so we want to learn about the journey and um, what, what, what are some of the discoveries, um, and in a minute we'll, we'll bring other voices, just to ground the, the context of the moment you, you refer to. We've been with a large community on a journey we call the Epoch Culmination Story, and the intuition on that morning was that we were about to embark on what, what I anticipated would be a challenging facing aspect where we will be confronted by work we have not done that we need to do each in our own journeys and that we will call to embrace the what in the sevenfold story we call the Blue Ridge where we confront the, the operating system that governs this world and how can we become agents for change. So the intuition that morning was that we will need to generate a fortifying essence, fortifying presence to help each other embrace whatever it was that we were about to, to uh, embrace in that journey. And it turned up, it presented itself as, could we invite people to speak to what friendship meant to them, specifically in the context of a development journey? Many of us have been on, on a personal development journey for many years. So what is the place of friendship in that? And then you said, let's not leave that as a one short conversation. And you invited a circle of friends here. And it is at this point that I'd like to ask uh, other voices if you were to introduce yourself and, and offer what moved you to inquire into and contemplate friendship on a year long journey. So, hi, my name is Out. Wilkin and I think one of the threads um, as far back as I can remember I used to have this imagery of what if you found yourself I find found myself walking all alone through a desert or through a forest and after days and days of walking I suddenly saw another human in the distance and I always had this wish that all that would fill me in that moment was just utter joy and and so it's almost been like this how to in the reality of that a lot of the time that's not what happens there might be fear there might be shrinking back or there might be swelling there might be whatever goes on in a human when together with other humans and somehow wishing to move in myself, my stance, my principle, my values to that setting where when I see another human, when I see myself in the mirror, that there is this awe, this joy of what is this? And here comes a friend, someone to travel alongside with for a moment perhaps or for longer. So that, that, that's sort of a first threat in myself. So hello everyone. My name is Theodora. I'm in Greece, really warm right now, 35 degrees. <laughs> so I start from that because uh, friendship is a level of uh, dealing with other human beings that can cause a melting. And uh, a melting of the 
more harsh parts or the insecurities or uh, those things that sometimes cover the it's external cover that we often put we modern humans to hide the more vulnerable the more soft the more true parts so i remember that growing up as a child because we were moving in many places i didn't have the chance to have friends every two years different school i became friends with animals i became friends with history and language like daniel said and then uh, i joined this group more from the perspective of uh, inquiring and discovering what friendship can be today in our challenging 21st century and even not meeting each other but uh, through video conference through zoom so that is a challenge that is a new opportunity to find things and it has proved to be very interesting uh, great teachings came out of it hello my name is uh, hanna from the netherlands and it was marvelous to have the opportunity to actually meet some friends on zoom especially in the time that there was a lot of fear going around the world in actually um can i approach something live still because of what was going on and it was marvelous to see that there was a support of different thinking different ideas about how to build friendship in a new way and although i didn't meet you live just what uh, theodora said on this little screen it's so amazing that there's a kind of um, trust in which we can speak to each other without holding back because we actually are open to the new ideas and searching what is the essence of friendship nowadays what is lacking in the world and um, it's marvelous to see that we are now trying to do that for almost a year but also trying to do that in daily life to have the new essence around which is so needed my name is perry thank you hannah hello aviv i i remember when uh, this project was was uh, promoted and i thought well sure it'll this will probably take a few weeks two or three weeks maybe and then we might come to some kind of result that would be useful and uh well it turns out that friendship is far more deep and layered and full than i could have ever imagined i think i'd start with what is my exploration kind of started with what friendship wasn't or what would the world be like without friendship and that caused me to look at this from a, a totally different point of view because that illuminated the space much like you know when you frame something you set it apart and then that thing becomes more clear from being outside of it and i was caused to think as i when i grew up i didn't have a lot of friends i was raised by a grandmother and mostly they were older people and they befriended me in a way but from a totally different generation two generations ahead of me and that befriending they would want me to be better and to be well and they wanted me to learn what was really important when i got to 60 70 and i didn't know that would be useful then because i just wanted to go play and i wanted to go play with my friends luckily there was a a, a place called the young men's christian association ymca which everybody goes to it's a place where they have a pool and playroom and i would show up there 
four years old, and I was too young to go in. But because of my persistence, they let me into the billiard room. And I started my uh, kind of a love with uh, snooker table. And I could not see over the top of it. I had to get on my tippy toes and it showed me how to play with this stick like this. Of course, it gave me a beautiful aim because I'm looking right at the level of the pool cue. But I found that people would come and help. And there's natural, this, this natural attraction to, to give of oneself when there's a need. And I, 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 you can jump in whenever you want to. I, I might talk for an hour. Want to, to talk too long at the moment, but the uh, it, it is just so surprising that things could happen like that when you didn't expect it. You wanted something. I needed friends. I wanted, but it all wasn't was very seldom those people my age. Later, of course, that changed. Yes. My name's Marianne, and I am from Ireland. Irish have a reputation of being one of the friendliest uh, nations in the world, actually. Um, very welcoming people, and very, they'll always talk to you as you're going about your daily business, even if it's just about the weather. Uh, what attracted me to this? particular research uh, quest was how friendship can let you know what sort of a person you are yourself because with your friends you can be the best person you can be. Um, I read a beautiful story uh, recently about the singer Art Garfunkel and how he had a lifelong friend who turned blind and how he helped him through that difficult time and how his friend helped him. But what Art Garfunkel said about it is, thanks to, this, thanks to this friend, I now know something more about me. And I know that I'm a kind person who helps my friends. So I thought, we, because of friends, you can know who you are. And uh, they're a mirror as well as a, a, a sounding board to, to what you are yourself, as well as providing um, rich and varied kaleidoscopic company all through your life. Hello, uh, my name is Kiriaki. I am from Greece. And um, there were uh, different uh, motives that um, kind of propelled me to join this group and this exploration on friendship. The one uh, thread uh, was um, that I saw my young um, adolescent daughters and also as young children that they kind of prioritize friendship above anything else. So I found this very interesting. So for instance, now we, we went to find a um, university and a place for uh, my daughter, my older daughter. And the only thing she was interested in was, will I be able to make friends here? Or is this a circumstance that will allow me to make friends? It was like, this was the only thing that interested her. And this happened many times. Um, and it makes me wonder why the younger generation, for the younger generation, uh, friendship seems to be like, more than food, more than uh, anything. It's like it's something that they, they, they really are looking. Um, maybe it is missing. The other thread is that I see that what was the glue uh, between humans uh, for many years, various glues, like for instance, the religions, they were places where the churches, where people would congregate and have some extra friendship, or even the political parties, or the tribes, or the um, small communities, even the families, or um, 
people doing the same hobby. And I see that somehow all these um, congregations are falling apart, even family, even, even the institution of family that was a great glue. So the, there are a lot of people that are single, for instance. And um, I am thinking a lot, maybe friendship is the new form of family in the future, and the roles that friends will play in the future. So this was another thread. And the last thread is that when I met my first friend, uh, I was um, around eight, and it was like an explosion happened inside me. Uh, she was a girl, and we were all the time together. It was like uh, falling in love, only worse. <laughs> so, uh, and from that moment on, my, my life was spoiled. So I experienced from a very young age the catalytic and powerful transformation, empowerment, soul companionship, softness, motivation, liberation that friendship can, can cause in life. So, and then in various stages of my life, I have always friends. And um, in this journey we have traveled, we, we have seen that there can be friendship with self, with others, with nature, and maybe with something higher. Um, a belief, an idea, a value, an essence. So, a vision, a dream. And also there are various levels of friendship. And there can be different forms of friendship, like there can be fleeting friendships, momentary, but that move you and change your life trajector trajectory. Or they can be long lasting, enduring friendships that deepen. And um, also we, were, we are wondering if there is an art of making friends, that maybe the children would learn how to make friends, and not just the children, everyone. So these are all questions that we have been uh, investigating. Hello, <laughs> my name's Robin and I'm from uh... London and England. And um, part of the appeal of this friendship for me is, you know, I've always seen it to be a kind of a timeless thing. You can make friends when you're very young and you, you may still know them years and years later. And it's incredible what it does to the human, you know, how it lights people up, friendship. Um, to, to see people together who have been friends for years there's a kind of a bond and a strength that if you're not part of it, you can never understand. But it's a timeless thing. I remember having a friend a long time ago and we used to develop a handshake together. You know, it was a special handshake. We put our hands up, twist, jab. And I hadn't seen that person for about 19 years. And as soon as I saw him, guess what? We went together and we did our special handshake. It hadn't died. Little things like that, that retain their quality for years and years and years. And I'm wondering, it's a whole mystery, this friendship, what people do that stays with them for durations of time. You know, unforgettable things. And I went to a, a funeral long, a, a few weeks ago and... Uh, Somebody turned up at the funeral and they said, oh, I haven't seen this person for 30 years, but I really wanted to be here today. And that struck me as being a mark of this timeless quality of friendship. Hi, my name's Chris and I currently live in the UK. Um, I joined this little group um, a little later than the others. And I would like to say, first of all, how lovely it was to actually walk into this, uh, metaphorically speaking, because we've only been on Zoom, how 
extraordinarily warm it was to walk into this particular environment. I felt, well, warmed. It felt trusting and I could feel myself being received. It's an interesting quality that's not necessarily easy to describe, but it's the sense of feeling more complete in some way in which the best of you then somehow gets felt because others are not judging and they actually welcome you in. And it was just wonderful. So it was just lovely to be in that. And the reason I didn't join sooner was because, well, I'm kind of shy. (laughs) And it took me a little while to kind of get to it and other factors as well. So there we go. That That's my little intro anyway. So there are three main uh, features or, or traces or themes that I hear through your various experiences as to why and how you, you've journeyed in this quest to decode and appreciate friendship. There is first the, the personal experience, either very early in age with friends and also along the journey and how we have each experienced moments or long durations of friendship and, and the, the rituals of, of those relationships and the power of them. So the, the, that's the, the first dimension, the experience. Then there is the observation that a few of you voiced of what is absent in the world and how part of the loneliness or the anxiety and the trouble with the current human condition can be seen in part to be the absence of that quality or property of friendship. And the third dimension is an inquiry into the, indeed the quality by itself, the essence of friendship. What is it? What is that presence? How does it show up? What does it make us feel and do? And if you were to describe that presence and and essence, what would be the qualities and the properties that will describe it? for you. So let me invite, please, uh, a second round. Anybody or Daniel, if if you want to lead, to perhaps share the the one or two. I know you could each speak now for an hour and we we have a a brief time here. But if you were to share the, the one or two discoveries in, in your inquiry for you about about the quality, about the essence of friendship, what would you say? I think that's very accurate. I think that's part of a large part of what we've been faced with and this and revealed to us. It seems that on the personal level, and I'm sure that others will deepen on this, the, this issue of starting with friendship to self, the actual acceptance, the recognition, the looking in the mirror and being able to say, yes, this is who I am, this is what I am, and I know because of friendship, I know that there is the best of me and the better of me, and that those two can look at the less and let it go and work with the bits that I wish to promote. And when that happens with others, then it really creates a presence, a very special presence, a very kind presence. And in that there is, for me, the idea of others of kind, But we are humankind. We're certainly not a human race. We are humankind. And the question of how much kinder can we actually be with ourselves and with each other? 
come into this. And I think that within that, the idea of the qualities, the, the, the ship of friendship, the state of friendship, is one in which the very human qualities that we, we seek, that we were born with or born into, those very qualities can come into play, which allows us to be the best of ourselves. And I find that these qualities are like vitamins, that without them, I die a little. I get hard and brittle. But when they're there, I soften, I warm, I open. And when that happens, many other things can, can join the party. And, and, and that's what I love. Thank you, Daniel. I see it as an essential force that's built into the human way. And not just the human way, because you see it with animals. You see it in uh, the way certain plants want to live together. And I am struggling to tr try to try and define this. It seems to be undefinable in that it appears to be many things, several things. I used to kind of look at it, the idea of where love begins with it. And I think now that love is an ingredient, if we were going to decide there were seven ingredients to friendship, I think love is only one of those ingredients. Love being more of a power almost. Uh, friendship targets something. It, it gathers something together. It puts communities together. It builds villages. It builds camaraderie. It puts together people in a way that magnifies and makes them stronger. I wrote a little something quickly when, when uh, we updated what we were doing. I doubt I could even read it because <laughs> my handwriting is poor and my glasses. But uh, it's a gathering of people together in an agency of strength that magnifies the collective purpose in those affected. I find that it is, it, it's strange. I, I look at, you know, in, 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 in um, how do you say, physics defines, tries to find the elemental forces of nature. But I, and I think it's done a pretty good job up to date right now with a lot more yet to come but i think that friendship is an, is an essential elemental force of living things and it gathers together in a magnetic way when people find themselves attracted it's, it has an attractive an, an attractor force it has a um a, 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 I like to find a better word than gluing together, but it pulls things together towards a purpose. I've had friendships that lasted only as long as the sports that we were in, we were connected to. And then for some reason, there wasn't any friendship after that. And there wasn't a lot of love in that, but we, 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 we liked being together. I, we, I don't think we would admit that we loved each other. My doubles partner in tennis, or I had the captain tennis teams and uh, other sports teams for a while. And, there's a love not like, that love and don't like you at all at times, especially when you have to play against each other. But it's still friendship. And um, I think that something else is allowed to happen because of friendship. I, it, now, I started with the question, what would the world be like without friendship? Well, we're seeing it right now in the unfriendship between countries where they may have been friends at one time. The, uh, that friendship can change, but it, it, only, it only comes together when there's a certain level of, of uh, exchange. I mean, if you want to be attracted to someone because you think they would help you, 
and you say, well, I want to get closer to that person. You may call that that my friend, but you're really, that has nothing to do with friendship. Friends are there whether you, whether you uh, are, are with them or not, whether they're helping you or not. They're with them. You, you, you make a pact in a way of reciprocal maintenance that allows something to build within the two of you or the three of you, the four of you, five of you that's greater than what you would be able to do yourself. And if you added up all the efforts of the people and put that in a computer, it would never amount to what a group of friends do together and what they can attract and all the help that goes with it. How would the human, I don't think the human race, I think this is part of the human, human, whatever we are, that it comes with us. And whether we touch it or not and allow it to have, to have its place has a lot to do with what happens. Well, thank you, Perry. Yeah. It triggers me into something uh, which has to do with uh, recognition. Would not be every human want to be recognized and that it's okay the way they are. And that's what I feel from friendship because this morning I was visiting a friend which I didn't see for two years. And she was actually very reluctant to, to meet because she's old and she don't want to get a disease or something. But when we were just drinking some coffee together and keep the distance and have respect for her the way she wants to actually have a talk with me, we actually could feel the warmth flowing between us, which was built years ago. And that, I was just wondering if that would be some kind of a solution for loneliness to recognize a person for what they are. And that we all have our struggles nowadays in this changing times, because nothing is certain anymore. So in that, I feel we need friendship in that way, that you can stand next to another person. Hannah, I had a similar experience um, recently in meeting an old friend who I hadn't seen for maybe 30 years. And I'd known her for a lot, lot longer than that. We were at university together, which was a long time ago. Um, she's possibly the oldest friend I, I have in the world. Um, but because we live in different countries and we'd gone different ways with our lives, we hadn't seen each other. And it just so happens she was in Ireland for a week's holiday near to me. So she came to the house and it was as if, in one way, it was as if we carried on just like there'd never been a gap of 30 years. We carried on chatting and talking and being the same together as we were 30 years ago. But that's not to say that neither of us had moved on or grown, because we had. And I was able to see, because I knew her though, all those years ago, what she managed to achieve in her life and reflect it back to her. And she was able to see the same about me. And at the same time, we were able to fill in the gaps in each other's memories. I produced a photograph album of a trip we'd been on together that she didn't even remember going on. And yet I treasured that memory for years and years and years. So there's something magic about old friends, I think. Um, and if you have an old friend that you can reconnect with, that is, that is a treasure. That is an absolute treasure. Um, that being said, there is a saying, isn't there? Um, make new friends and keep the old for the new are silver, but the old are gold. So new friends as well. It's not to say that old friends are the only friends you need. Um, I just thought I'd share that as well, because there is something very, very precious when two people can travel along the same paths, even though they're not together, and converge 
every so often and be able to um, meet and exchange and have all the richness that brought them together in the first place. It gives a well-being, isn't it, Marianne? Absolutely, yeah. 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 Well, uh, talking about well-being. Sorry, Kiriaki. Can I? Okay. So, um, and it's it's almost impossible in a one and a half hour during this conversation to uh, present some of the threads that we've gone through because much of it was live discovery. So, uh, I'm also now triggered by many things that some of the friends here are saying, I hope you can hear me because the dog is also barking. <laughs> so one of the aspects that uh, Daniel mentioned was about allowance and uh, about uh, allowing relations and uh, not only about between human to human, but also with uh, the trees that, for instance, I can now say that I have made friendship with the trees that are on the hill as I'm driving from my village to the town nearby, there's these pine trees. And every time I drive, I look at them and I greet them and they greet me back. And then if for some reason, for some weeks, I'm not there with them, they are no longer there with me when I travel through. So there is this transference by allowing the presence of the trees to be important, to have value for me. About allowance, uh, we were yesterday on the beach, seven in the morning before the sun rises, and it was the two of us and three dogs appeared from the shepherd nearby. They bring their sheep and goats down on the beach, you know, as to graze and then move them around. So these were, it's probably their time of. Uh, seven in the morning, they came to the sea. And there is this uh, bigger one who is the leader with a red collar and two younger ones following. And they come down, they play, they go into the sea, they swim. And then the, the big boss wants to play with them, wants to run on the sand and roll over. And they do it five minutes. They come to me, of course, they fill me with sand. And then the other two who are younger, they get tired. They are by now playing on a beach volley sand. So they get tired and they're reluctant and he allows them. So what he does, he sits down, he makes himself like a carpet, very small and insignificant. So they can come on him and sit on him and they can, you know, exploit him and they can touch him and eat him. So they take over and then they feel good and he gets up and they continue to play and run and eventually they leave. I bring this about allowance because it's such rare uh, in the human dealings too. And it is one thing to, to accept the differences, to accept that other people can think different things, can come from a different approach. But the value is in... Uh, what was a synergy that Chris was talking about before? The synergy of things working together, co-creating a new view, co-creating a new approach, opening a, a new pathway of, of thinking or feeling. Yeah, great, Theodora. Uh, fantastic. And uh, yeah, often, often we have uh, spoken how also some of our friendships run um, many years back, like myself and Theodora. And um, something that I know about uh, Theodora's friendship is that um, she will she will go, you know, she will she can go to to um, and. Um, to save me, let's say, to, she will do whatever. And this is a special bond between us. And um, 
I'm wondering also about the different natures and expressions that friendship has. So, for instance, um, sometimes friendship is more uh, in being with, in allowance, as Theodora and others said, that allows the flow, or it can be in console, um, in conversation, in consolation, in uh, advising, sustenance, inspiring, warming. But some other times it can be also in protecting, in telling the truth, in covering the other person back, or in going that extra mile so that the other person can, can fulfill his or her destiny. And one of the stories we've said uh, that is a bit widely known is um, about uh, Marilyn Monroe, how she stood up for Ella, Ella Fitzgerald, the jazz singer, and um, that was in the time of a quite a uh, it was strong, let's say, more racist uh, paradigm. And uh, when when Marilyn Monroe heard that uh, in the Macabo Club they didn't hire Ella Fitzgerald. She, she calls herself the manager of this club, and she said, uh, uh, you hire Ella, and I will be there in both shows in the first, um, in the first um, table. And she did. And that's how Ella Fitzgerald became famous, and a very important figure in the jazz singing. And um, I was thinking of this act of really holding, uh, supporting someone. And um, maybe these two two aspects of friendship, which maybe one is more maternal and the other is more paternal, um, maybe when when these two influences are there, then the reservoir of friendship and love that someone receives give him the confidence or her the confidence to really stand on one's feet and be a human that can be of service um, to the evolution. One, um, one feature or one thing that sort of pops up in me when we talk about the essence of friendship, it makes me think of ginger. <laughs> you know how you can find like an old nub of ginger somewhere and you're just about to throw it away and you're like, hold on, let me, let me just peel back. And almost always at the core of it, it's fresh, full of its life force, its zest, its freshness. So there's something about friendship that is like that, that's like ever, ever fresh with quite um, an energy to also refresh whoever um, ingests it. And then it also makes me kind of trace all the times in my life that someone has given me a key with trust. And it's many times, and I know every time I felt as if it, it was such a, a great opening saying, I, I let you in, I trust you enough to let you in, to give you this key. And it might have been to, for all kinds of reasons that I was given these keys, whether it was to clean or to house it or to, I always thought I was always, I've always been moved by it. And then of course, it's about the kind of keys we also extend or give to each other that allow us in to the parts of us that, both the parts of us that are are sacred to us that we sometimes even ourselves forget to kind of open the door to and enter and also to the parts that we struggle with. So there's this sense of, um, of saying, I let you in and it is as it is because it's almost like with any human, the moment we peel away whatever life has 
caused us to be like at the core of it there's this very ever fresh something that we can be with and find great strength in and when that is shared it's almost this sense of there's a settlement that comes upon humans and a strength so i think it's something that i and that we as humans search for always and just like waves it it, it comes and goes in strength and so on uh, and strength or potency but when we trigger it or allow it or feed it there's this great inclusion in life that's afforded us by us affording it to others extending it to others so let me build on this and i, I know we probably have not completed the full round but uh, let me take this last uh, invitation from out and offer the following observation and then invite us to do the the final round which builds on uh, out what you just offer that I'm going to invite you to speak as friendship and to speak the the words of friendship as a as a presence offering its intelligence and and guidance to us humans and the way out just demonstrated it was an invitation come in the door is open or whatever way you you choose to say that so wh while you sense into how will and this is part of the essencing practice where we become the voice of friendship in this sense into human affairs but as you sense into that a few observations so we understand from evolutionary biology that we are we are bonding mammals and there is an evolutionary reason as to why we are wired to to bond we understand that what you're all describing is is that something else beyond that 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 builds on the biological wiring of bonding that, that again we understand and appreciate evolutionarily why it's there to bring about the the, the capacity of, of the species to thrive because the way you are describing friendship is beyond the familial dimension there can be friendship inside a family experience but what you describe is something that extends beyond family and it has the property and the quality that goes through humanity at large and some of the saliences that I've heard through your experiences now they talk of this uh, a pro property of recognition and witnessing there is something about the human that needs to know that I have been here and traveled through this journey and I have been witnessed and recognized and 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 in that witnessing I have both received myself back and I know that I am known and there is something about that proffering of consciousness and recognition and witnessing that spiritualizes and, and um, immortalizes the fact that I have been here once because somewhere we always know that mortality is right around the corner. And what is the, the absolution of mortality and what is the redemption of mortality it's that immortal recognition and knowledge that I've witnessed you and you have witnessed me and that in that mutual recognition we have something that's shared that lives beyond time so that's that's one uh, saliency that, that I hear through your various experiences and and the, the other that comes alive for me is um, how true friendship 
is found in not holding each other back, but actually in setting each other free. Yes, there are sometimes people who believe they are friends with each other, but actually they will act in the reverse way. They will make sure you do not break out into the new greater range of possibility and expression that, that is available for you. And that is not true friendship. That's, that's hindering and binding you to who you were yesterday. True friendship is the release that we enable in each other. True friendship is true friendship is not accepting the lesser me, the lesser you. True friendship is calling and summoning you to your greater, more versatile, more courageous more compassionate self. So these are these are two saliences that that um, I um, I'm experiencing through your various uh, contributions, and and I'd, I'd invite now that we we try to do this as an experiment. If you were so, two formats that you can do this. Either you dis, you you. And, and the language is here is going to be not descriptive, but, but brevity is what goes with this practice. So you either use a language to offer a brief of do or don't, like, like um, a guidance brief into how to practice and cultivate friendship. That's one way to essence friendship. Or you truly embody the essence and you speak as though you are friendship, offering your presence and your intelligence to the human realm. Uh, please, let us uh, play. I would like to... Oh, Daniel. Please, please, Chris. Chris. Yes. Um, in the second form, embodying friendship. So I'd like to give it a go. As friendship, I see you, and I see the best of you, and I feel a warming and a wanting to be with you. As an undiscovered continent that you are, that is warming, inviting, and in trust, I feel the belonging and the fact that in being together, our lives can be more enriched. You enrich me as I enrich you. So it's actually something we can add together. I am friendship. I cannot exist alone, for how can one be friends with nothing? I look to that which you are and help to attract that which belongs with you. My job is to bring things together, to help them become stronger and able to pursue that which they decide to do. My job is to build, to grow, to help all things be what they choose to be. I'd love to have a go at this as well. I am friendship and I am freely available to you. If you would choose to avail of me, I will make your life richer. I will make your life warmer. I will bring to you a wealth of essences, of kindness, of trust, of joy, of sharing. I will bring all these things into your life and to those of and to the lives of those that you share your time with. I'll bind you together in freedom with the people that you love. So that you can go on your way supported, loved, encouraged, motivated and inspired. I am in the world for humanity. 
to be the best they can be. Please use me. I, Friendship, challenge you to deepen the existence of life, which has to do with love and warmth and never give up. So let's try together journey this life. I am friendship and I am the great affordor of connection and learning in this shared, oh shoot, I just love, lost the thread of it. All right, well, it was a start. <laughs> Maybe I'll come back. <laughs> when I was young, I got shown a demonstration of electricity and magnetism by way of a piece of paper with some iron filings and a magnet underneath. And when the person moved the magnet, the iron filings would do a little dance. And that's always stayed with me, that image, because friendships like that, it's like a magnet. And the more you do it, the stronger it gets. And it makes people do the most extraordinary things. People gather around the same things that magnetize, they're magnetized to. Could be like, as Perry Murdia said, could be the football team. Could be they love stamp collecting or walking the dog. It's an amazing presence. And it, it's a warming thing. It warms one's soul. When you are together with someone magnetized to the same idea and the same principles and the same thrills, there's an overspill that can happen and it causes people to do the most extraordinary things. You know, imagine being with a choir that sing together the songs that they really want to sing. Nothing is going to put them off. It's a natural freedom. And I want this quality to be with all human beings. As we've noticed, we are humans. We are warm things. We are magnetic things. And this magnetic presence of friendliness can attract to us such a delight, and such a power and such a presence. And I do wish it upon people because to be with that and just to be touched by it would mean we put down the harder aspects of life. Indeed, we would even think about picking those things up. So please, please, please give friendship a chance in your life and it maybe it will lighten you and take you into a realm you never even knew before. And it will give you a richness between people that is so strong, so precious, will last forever. Um, I am friendship, and I often appear through the eyes of another. That come through the, I come through the look to caress, to swell up the beautiful things that I see around me in another thing, in another person, in an idea, in an essence, in a tree. And I magnify, magnify, I empower, I heal, I soften, I inspire, and I make things lighter and cleaner and more happy and bubbling. Um, it's interesting that often uh, young girls, they, they, they laugh together and they, there is this laughing all the time when they share their secrets or their ideas. And I, I grow with conversation, I grow with common language, with common moments, shared moments, and I deepen with common mission and common vision. And I can make people do incredible things, go beyond those. New frontiers, breaking new frontiers. And it's interesting, a lot of great movements and a lot of changing things in her story happened through friends, through, through a group of friends. Um, many revolutions and many uh, breakthroughs in science and philosophy happened through friends. 
definitely in the arts as well. And um, let's try to French also from, from I have been misused. I have been used um, for people to, to gain power, for people to make, uh, yeah. I have been misused, so let's clean up friendship and, 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 and find the, find a friendship that is liberating, as, uh, as Vivian said, and not binding people. And, um, let's ex extend that friendship, uh, to others who are different, not, not just to the ones that are, we are in simile and that we can see the similarities. But there's a leap in friendship to those that are different and that we, we can't understand them. And that's another, uh, another part to conquer in friendship. So uh, I want to speak uh, about the ocean of uh, friendship that seems to have in it uh, many islands, many continents, many spaces to still discover for human beings. And some of them are forgiveness, uh, understanding that everything has a value and everyone has a value, uh, being renewed, being able to step up to the or the challenge or the invitation or look for a better reasoning, uh, being able to, that's some of the continents that the, the boat or the ocean of friendship, because I'm wondering what it really is, can lead us or take us into the ecology of friendship. And some of it is uh, to alter your stride and meet a stranger, which is you, like it was mentioned today. And a story from the ancients that we teach at school in Greece, it's a short one. There was this, uh, in South Italy, a Greek colony, there is this tyrant ruler, and there is the young men that revolt to kill him, and they are caught. I don't remember the name of the ruler, but two of these young men who revolted to kill the tyrant were Damon and Phidias. And he, the one of them is, uh, Damon is sentenced to death by the tyrant. And he says, that is open public, eh? it's the Agora where everyone is meeting with everyone, nothing is hidden, the citizens are there. And he says, Damon says, I need to, uh, before you kill me, I need to go and settle some affairs. But because I'm an honorable man, I will have Phidias step up for me, step in. And if I don't come by sunset, you will kill him. So his friend comes forward and says, yeah, I trust you. You will be here. So Damon goes, settles his mother, his sister, his chickens, whatever it is. And by sunset, Damon appears to be killed, to be executed in front of everyone. To the surprise of the tyrant, because the tyrant had not met such friendship. And there he says, can I also be a part of your friendship? Can we be three be friends? And that's one of the bridgings that uh, friendship allows. So we are about to... Um bring this to landing, but before we do, Daniel, please. <clears throat> yeah, just wondering if Aud wanted to come back in again. Just listening at the moment, but thank you. Yeah. I think everybody that's ever experienced some of what friendship has to offer 
can recognize it as a sacred space, a plasma of possibility, an opening to realms that we only dream of. And, uh, and I, I have a very strong sense that although at the moment we only experience these intimate moments with special people that we call friends, it's actually a signpost, a, a hint of what the future of the humankind is supposed to be, where we actually have this allowance this release of brilliance, this support of the best of each other, and also the prevention of the worst, that we share these as our common humanity, not just with a special few, but it seems to me that the whole of the future of the human race is dependent upon us growing into a collective space and plasma where these things are a platform for us reaching the next evolutionary step of what's calling the human race forward today, touching perhaps upon a greater than planetary perception, a greater than planetary reality where we are all integrated into the whole and we each have a part to play as a unique and individual person, part, partner in the partnership that we call life. And for me, that's where friendship is uh, directing my, my footsteps and my thinking. So with that, um, you're really elevating Daniel, the consideration of friendship is something that goes beyond the person we confide our secrets with to the spiritual property that humankind is nourished by and where the future can, can be found, can, can be accessed. And, and the reason what you have all offered here today in, in this uh, story from Theodora about how friendship becomes a redeeming essence such that the, the one who intends to kill wants to be included in the kiss of life of a redemptive possibility. The, the reason that property in that essence truly an, an invitation for us humans to not suppress anything but to integrate and embrace who we are in our true nature and then embrace that higher, greater, larger human possibility that we are describing in a variety of ways and ultimately is, is an invitation to, to uh, unlock, to release the universal possibility of human life. So thank you for... Uh, offering this, these few glimpses from a year-long quest and journey. If we captured some of those and, and offered that invitation to whoever stayed with us to, through to this point uh, in the conversation, and that encourages you and invites you to look in a new way at the friends in your life and the place of friendship in your life and how, as Perry said in the beginning, if friendship was not part of this world, the world would be different. There would be no warmth, no encouragement, no kindness, no new possibility. Uh, let us cherish what it all stands for and let us speak for the essence of friendship into human affairs today and into the future. Thank you. Just, can I, can I say like just something that landed with Please. me from the, yeah, from the whole line of 
that we've walked, um, it really lands in me, in a way, the inquiry. What do I choose to be a friend to? What do I choose to be a friend of in myself, in others, in the world at large? And I think that frees up um, how I even go about thinking about friendship, that I can choose what, in a sense, I open myself to and what I feed. What am I a friend of? So, yeah, I think for me, that's a great inquiry um, to journey onwards with. And in the light of your light, and in the light of your light, and in the light of your light, I can grow again. And in the light of my light, and in the light of my light, and in the light of my light of my life and in the light of my life you can grow again and in the light of your life and in the light of your life and in the light of your life I can grow again and in the light of of our lives, yet in the light of our lives, the world can grow again. Along with our website at portalsofperception.org, Portals is also available on YouTube and on all podcast platforms, as well as social media. You can become an active member and join the conversation in community events. And you can help us get the word out by liking this content and by sharing it with your friends.